Oi, oi! Weekend preview. I need to sort my hair out. I'm at a wedding this weekend. I need to sort my face out. Taking the beard off was a big mistake. Shows off the fact I look like a thumb. Um, headset on as well, so I don't know whether the audio is going to be better or worse because of that. But basically, it's decent action this weekend, isn't it? Um, there's potentially a couple of bets I'm interested in or a few things that I might want to suggest. Um, I also want to cover the, some of the action at Haydock because there's some grade two... Cheltenham trials or at least spring festival trials that I think is worth mentioning what they can mean and what's happened historically just because I want to and then I'll give you my views on the uh, Clarence house but not much needs to be said about that so we'll, we'll kick off with the um, the Haydock stuff and then I'll mention the horses that I fancy for bets one of them could be in here and then um, yeah we'll do Clarence house chase so um, the novices chase that kicks off we've had Tarquin de Soy won that and then won the JLT turn as whatever we want to call it we've had Bristol Demai won it was beaten by um, Black Hercules so it can be a pointer towards that race. Now, obviously, we need to think about the fact that it's been going up against Bob Odinger. Um, I still do think that Bob Odinger is not going to be as good over fences as he was over hurdles. He may not need to be to go and win this race, but maybe similarly to like a big bucks. I don't know. I can see this horse back over hurdles at some point, but it's very early in his career to be saying sort of things like that. But I've said it, said it again. This race, though, do we really think anything's going to be challenging him? Well, no, we don't think the race looks very deep, the JLT, but potentially there could be something here that could run okay. Like Papa Tango Charlie was a big money purchase. Wasn't great over hurdles, really, but got that handicap mark, so they're able to exploit that this season. He's made a mark of one four five now. Um, no real reason why he can't progress further, but whether he is fully 145 or not I don't know shake him up Harry was pretty good over two miles here at that course uh, this course um, so the step up and trip I think will suit him um, so yeah we'll have to see I do I do think that the two and a half miles of um, Haydock I mean it's going to depend on the different types of ground and different types of heavy and different types of soft at Haydock but it, it, it does typically suit stay in horses more than anything um, that sort of leads us into the sky bet Supreme trial, is it? Rossington Maine, novices hurdle. Grade two again. So I just, like, a lot of horses in this race will end up Ballymore bound or in the Mersey. Novices hurdle at Aintree, which is the two and a half miler. So that's what I'm saying off the bat. Now, this isn't for me to say that I think John Bomb's going to go that route. Nicky Henderson won this with Amaretta Rose 2007. Amaretta Rose was third in a Supreme beat and fab. So the ones that he likes and the ones that he uses this as a trial for, if they go and win, they end up in the Supreme. Mr. Fisher did it as well, although he was absolutely clouted by classical dream. But there we go. I don't want to digress too far on that. Henderson has had another few horses in here that have disappointed. He's had a couple that have been beaten second in a Martin Pipe after. So let's just pray and hope that John Bond isn't a Martin Pipe horse, but that's not going to happen. Um, Peddler's Cross did win this, uh, won the Ballymore, and then went and won that Mersey novice, as I mentioned, at Aintree. Cinders and Ashes did actually win this race and win the Supreme, but that's going back to 2012. So since then, we've not had a lot going on and doing really, really, really well at Cheltenham. We've had Bright Forecast third in a bad anymore. That was the year that Mr. Fisher was beaten by um, Pascal Dream. So would you say third behind Champ and City Island was a better performance than second in the suit? I mean, eighth in the Supreme? I'd probably argue yes. Um, We've had Le Prezien was second behind York Hill at Aintree in the Mersey Novices. It's a freebie was third in the bad anymore that year. So the point of me mentioning all that sort of stuff is that it's a supreme trial in name, but not necessarily in nature, although Nicky Henderson would be using it as a supreme trial. So you might see people banned about the stuff like I've said there, that lots of horses go Ballymore. John Bond's not going to be going Ballymore. Anywho, my eye could be going Ballymore. He was one that I mentioned at a bit of a price for the race. I do worry this horse maybe is a bit of a quitter. Maybe he doesn't show his best if he's going to get beat or if he's in a bit of a battle. So hopefully we'll find out more at Haydock. I do think Haydock will suit stay in horses as well. Um, so, yeah, my eye, I'm hoping, will run well. He needs to do enough here for Harry Fry to warrant sending him to Cheltenham. We know that Harry Fry could be a bit precious of these horses, but I think my eye is a Ballymore type. Um, obviously, Harry Fry had Neon Wolf that won this trial and then was second, beaten ahead by Willoughby Court. So not saying they're the same horses, but when you look at trainers using it for progression, I don't think Harry Fry is using this as a trial for the Supreme, whereas Nicky Henderson will be. And um, Richmond Lake's in there as well, worthy of a mention. But really, there's seven runners in the race. I think my eye could because he gets five pounds, could go close to John Bond, could beat a John Bond. John Bond carries 11-11, Zamdi man. Um, I think he was ultimately pulled up in the Ballymore. He carried, um, oh no, he was fifth in the Ballymore, I think. He carried 11 stone 11, last horse to do that to win this race, but not every year there's a horse that carries that 11-11. It's a penalty system, so blah, blah, blah. Don't need to say it really. But John Bond's got to give five pounds to my eye. I think my eye is good for that. 
Um, a friend of mine, George, who's going to be doing a preview us for the trials day next week, hopefully, he's mentioned me or messaged me and said that Labrooks and Corals are doing a fifth the odds, the first three places. So it's a seven runner race, but three places. So obviously, you have to keep an eye on what the terms are. Like if it goes down to a certain number, they might remove those prices or at least those terms. But I think five to one might I sort of bet to nothing in here. I possibly won't be doing it myself, but like it'd be the way that I would be more inclined because John Bonnet one to two, you just let him go. We're looking at it for a supreme section, aren't we? My I, I did say that potentially could throw the towel in, so that's a tiny bit of a worry. But the race lacks any depth behind those, I suppose. Um, so I think my I could run well, but if you're that way inclined, I say the seven runners only put people off the each way punt, and you could get on with Labrooks corals, but you know, sit back and just watch the race. Then we've got the Unibet. Champion hurdle trial, the grade two. The only horse that's won this and won at the festival is Ingalls Drevery won the uh, stairs hurdle. So again, Haydock leading its way to being horses that maybe prefer a bit further. We've had lots of horses that have won this and then placed at Cheltenham in the champion. Let's not forget that new one has done it. Rooster Booster was beaten favourite in there. Um, there's a few. Um, so yeah, it's a nice enough trial. But at the end of the day, Tommy's Oscar comes in here as the highest rated. I think he's probably the one of the highest rated hurdlers Britain have got anyway. Gets six pounds from the top weight, gets weight from Garo de Julie as well. So on these terms, should win. No reason why not. He's an eight to 11 poke. You'd expect that. But is he really going to be winning a champion hurdle? Nope. Um, but then there's not much depth behind Honeysuckle, really, is there? So, you know, never know. Could be a little marker for him to come third or fourth. Come Cheltenham. Then there is another grade two, the Peter Marsh Handicap Chase, but I'm not going to be saying anything on that. Other than what top trolling from the jockey club saying the most exciting horse running at Haydock this weekend's Royal Pagai. John Bon Backers. Well, not just John Bon Backers, full stop. John Bon's the most exciting horse running at Haydock this weekend. Anywho, I'm going to move on to a horse that I am potentially going to back this weekend um, before I talk about the Clarence House because, you know, it needs to be said who I fancy in the Clarence House. No one would have a clue as it stands. Fancy an odds on poke. Anywho, there's a horse that was due, well, entered up at Ascot, and I wanted to, I wanted him to run at Ascot to win his review, and I wanted to back him at Ascot, um, mainly because there's a horse in this race that doesn't scare me, but hopefully he's going to give us a bit of a price, but makes me think more than I want to think. Um, but Marble Sands is the horse that I like. Marble Sands is a horse that probably needs to be ridden more prominently than he has been in his last two runs. I thought first time up, I'm not saying that people aren't trying, but I thought they could have won with him if they wanted to, should have kicked on a bit sooner. And then the race at Newcastle as well, I backed him because Lily was back on. I thought that Lily would be more prominent in there, possibly should have waited to back it in running. Um, but yeah, left it too late to ask him to get there and was never going to really beat Mr. Glass anyway. But he's only been given a mark of 117. I think he's much, much, much better than that. Now, this isn't a handicap, so twofold are they going to save him for a handicap or could he win this go up a few pounds and then dot up in a handicap i think he could like i think he's much better than 117 um so he would rate a, a fairly strong fancy this weekend now i talk about value in my entry points things like that i haven't quite done it with this race but there is one horse in here that is going to make uh, a valid um like battle for the market is outlaw peter for paul nichols now this horse if you actually read from its form was nine lengths beaten in a bumper at Navin by three stripe life. So that'll do us, wouldn't it? Then he's won his bumper at Worcester and he won okay, to be honest with you. Stayed on, looked like a, just a typical staying horse for, for Nichols. Then they ran at Ex where they stepped up in trip. The vet represented that he was found to be lame after the race, but he was only beaten four ish lengths. Um, was fairly keen in the race as well. So they dropped him back in trip after they actually ran him against Constitution Hill. Um, that was the Andy Stewart race as well. So I think a lot of people fancy me. He was five to one poke in there. He, I mean, he ran okay. If you take all the numbers as they are and say that my eye potentially could be a 130s horse and this horse was like another 17 lengths behind that. He's rated 117. So maybe he's about right on his rating, but I don't know. It was lame that time before, whether they went all out of sand down or not, I don't know. Probably wants further, even though that race would have suited a stayer. I don't know. I'm sort of spitballing that I think that this outlaw Peter will win races I think he's better than 117 so the one that scares me in the race um in here anyway but look Mark, there's 14 runners in the race I want I don't know what I want as an entry point for Marble Sands but I want to back Marble Sands now I cannot have Marble Sands out the first three I can't really have him out the first two I think he'll win the race but again maybe with Paddy Brennan on board this time his hold up tactics aren't going to particularly suit the horse and it may be that they are saving him for a handicap but I think this is a very winnable race obviously if I'm looking to steam in and looking to do an each way bet I'm, I'm really going to want to be getting a bigger price than the the place terms um, 
So it'll probably be a fifth of the odds, won't it? So it'd be five to one plus we'd be going for that. But I wouldn't mind taking a little bit under just to get some cover in there. But yeah, basically I've waffled enough on this. Marble Sands is one that I want to back this weekend and I will be in one way, shape or form. If Outlaw Peter wasn't in the race, I would be hammering Marble Sands win only. Um, and it might be a bit of a stupid thing to do, given that I think he'll definitely place. But if Outlaw, Outlaw Peter wasn't in here, I'd have Marble Sands short. But given the fact that it is just a maiden hurdle, I think we might get a price about him before it goes up. So keep an eye on the market for the 12.58 tournament on Saturday. I really, really, really fancy Marble Sands. Like he would definitely be up there. The only horse that could beat him in the race, I think, is Outlaw Peter. And I think he can beat Outlaw Peter. So that's that done. And that will be a bet. Obviously, I've changed the way I'm playing this season, but I will be will be hitting that. Again, price dependent, but I will be hitting it because I'm sure we'll get a price. Um, the Clarence House doesn't need to be said really what's going on with it. I think what needs to be said has been said already by plenty of people. Look, it's, it's a clash between Shishkin and Nergamin. We all know that. It's going to be a very, very good race to watch. Part of me wants it to be a battle where not something happens on purpose, but where they're close enough that you could imagine that it could be a reversal at Cheltenham. Like I want the champion chase picture to still be open just for the, the nice dreamy part of it. And I think Ascot's a track that you can give horses excuses for. Like there's lots of quick fences coming up in quick succession, which isn't the same as at Cheltenham. The undulations. Okay. There are undulations at Cheltenham, but there's a few dips at Ascot that people don't particularly like. And obviously it's the opposite direction. So, it's going to be an answer for an ergamine whether he can travel as well. I knew when we talked about the Christmas previews, I knew that he'd send a horse to the Clarence House and we fairly, were fairly sure it was going to be an ergamine. That is the case. Um, so we're going to find out if he travels or not. I'm not saying that Shackon didn't travel when he came over to Sandown, but he didn't do it at Cheltenham and he didn't turn up at Sandown. I know there was an excuse. It was his toe, wasn't it? But there's a chance there could be excuses with an ergamine that you could forgive going into Cheltenham. But with Shishkin, I don't, I mean, you could, the only thing excuse potentially could be the trap, but like Shishkin, I expect, fully expect him to win this. I expect him to bolt up as well. Like I'm not saying he's going to win hard held on the bridle, but I think he's going to win. I think he's going to win comfortably. And I think it sort of puts the argument to bed to a point that he's better than an ergamine. But again, those points of, did an ergamine have the best travel over? Um, will he improve at Cheltenham? All those different bits and pieces. I, I think it, people will still be on his side, but I, I fully think that Shishkin will win this. Hopefully they both just get round and there's no incidents throughout the race um, for any of the other horses or, or, or for these to make like race affecting impacts like um, Shishkin's apparent flat spot or Nico's flat spot or making mistenses at flights, all those sort of things. We just want to see a clean run race and basically get an answer to who's the better of the two of them. Do I think that Willie Mullins would have left some work on an ergamine from this to Cheltenham, probably. And do I think that Nicky Henderson would have left some work on Shishkin from here to Cheltenham? Again, probably. Like then neither of them are going to be like 50% fit. They're going to be fairly close to it. But I would expect that both of them could improve for this run and going into Cheltenham. Now, Hitman was going to be in here. I was keen on watching that for the spectacle, but I'm sure they'll go against Spirit of Hitman now, who potentially could be. An okay bet though, even though he's a bit of a dog. But anyway, back to this Clarence House. I think Shishkin will win. Fingers crossed. Um, we just get that great spectacle. As I say, I will be at a wedding. Hopefully, I'll have been thrown out by the time this race goes off. But be lucky with your selections over the weekend, whatever you fancy. I know there's some other great action going on, but I wanted to try and keep this a little bit shorter. Thank you as always for your support. There's a lot of people watching the videos now that don't subscribe, about 70% of you. So if you could do me a favor and subscribe, it costs you nothing. Just click a button. And if not, just set up a YouTube account because why not? Just do it for me. And then click like if you can. I know I've said that at the end because a fewer people will be watching at the end. So hopefully I've pissed off fewer people. But have a great weekend. Marble Sands, I will be back in this weekend in one way, shape or form. Outlaw Pete is the only danger in my eyes, but I'm mad keen on Marble Sands. And he would be one that I'll be following next time, especially when they stick him in a handicap anyway. Um, and yeah, up the shish game.